Another question. What uh what is your forefather? Your father? What what what, what, what nationality is your father? Mexican. So do you uh, do y'all believe it? Do y'all believe in God? Do y'all believe in the Bible? Do you do you realize that you cannot find Mexican written in the Bible anywhere? Right. So now the next question is you got to ask yourself. Well, if I can't find it in the Bible, and this is what I, I fix my belief off of in my way of living life, where did the term Mexican come from? Yeah. Bring it out. The term Mexican come from our oppressors, our slave masters put by words upon us through captivity. Right. When the so-called Mexicans was conquered by the Spaniards, that's when you get the term of Mexican. In the Middle Ages, uh, they was called Aztecas. Yeah, so so we're going to prove to you out of the Bible, according to the Bible, that you are not Mexicans. You are from the uh, you are from the 12 tribes of Israel. So give me Genesis 49 and I do this verse 12. So we're going to prove to you out the Bible, this is what we have not been learning in our communities thus far, until we woke up and understood what the Bible, who the Bible was actually written to, and who it was, was actually talking to. It was actually written for the 12 tribes of Israel, and it's for the 12 tribes of Israel, for nobody else. This is our Bible, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and the Native Americans. This is our photo album. We got to read it, and we got to see ourselves in there. Right. Read it. Genesis chapter 49, verse 14. Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. Okay, it say Issachar. So that would be the biblically name that God has for the so-called Mexicans. Right. So y'all will be from the tribe of Issachar. So it says, so this is how, I'm going to speed you up. When you read uh, verse 49, you got Abraham, Jacob, uh, Jacob and uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. Then he gathered them around the bed. He was telling them what would be stored in the last days. And when you walk upon the earth in the midst of just living your normal life, you will be able to go back to here and read it and understand the future prophecy and fit yourself and know that it's talking about Issachar when we read this. Right. So read it again. Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. So it's say Issachar. This is a prophecy that fits Issachar, which will beat the so-called Mexican to let them know they ne that they're not Mexican. They come from the tribe of Issachar. It said there would be a strong what? As couching down between two burdens. A strong as couching down between two birds. So Issachar is a strong nation. And it said couch it down between two birds. So now we got to ask ourselves, what is these two birds that Issachar is couching down between? One bird would be, uh, how, how, how is the uh, land mass over there in uh, uh, Mexico? Over there in Mexico, is it pleasant to live? Huh? Or is it a lot of killing, drug cartel, a lot of, a lot of people trying to get out of Mexico to come over here to have a better life for their kids. Right. A better life to raise them up, to have families where they ain't always uh, in the cross line of the cartel killing them or, you know, they, they, they family going over to the cartel or the Mexican army corrupt and uh, 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 oppressing them over there in the land of Mexico. So let me ask that question again. Is Mexico a pleasant place to raise your family as well? Is it good land for the, for the so-called Mexicans? Okay, so that's why a lot of people come over here. And uh, so that's one of the birds, because Mexico, it was once a pleasant land. If uh, once uh, Issachar was keeping the commandments, but the thing about it is now it's a burden because they are oppressed in the landmass of Mexico. They're trying to run up out of Mexico to get over here. And then once they get on the other side of the border and actually get to the United States of America, that's the second burden. Because now when they get over here to the United States of uh, America, they don't want them over here. Now they want to do all of these uh, border uh, laws and build, wall. build the wall up. Trump want to build the wall up to keep Issachar from coming over here. So mm -hmm. that's, that's stuck and bowed down. So now they going back between Mexico and America. They trying to run from Mexico and get put out of, uh, of America. That's two burdens. That's how you know that the Bible is talking about the so-called Mexican. And that's how you can identify that with them being a Mexican. That's two birds. Read it again. And the land that it was pleasant uh -huh. and bowed his shoulder to bear and became a servant unto tribute. So now Issachar, the so-called uh, Mexicans, became a servant to tribute. So now over here they working for low wages. 
So when they come over here, they just to try to get enough money to send back over there to Mexico to be able to take care of their family or whatever houses they got over there in Mexico, they become a servant to tribute. So now when they get over here, they, they probably uh, don't have any papers legally, so now they got to take a job wherever they can get a job at for right. their wages so they can still be able to provide for their money. Because any money that you make over here in America, you send it back to Mexico, it's going to double, triple, or whatever. So they, they become a servant to trip. Uh, Reed, is it on that? No, that's it. Okay, give me Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the Bible, God said to the uh, Mexicans from the tribe of Issachar, the so-called Mexican, who God called Issachar, he said, if you do not listen to the commandments that's in the Bible and do all of them, curses will come upon you. Right. Now, is curse something good or something bad? It's a bad thing. So God say, if you don't listen to me, the one who created heaven, earth, and everything beneath it and everything on it, and created you and put you in earth, if you don't listen to me, I'm going to bring bad things upon you. Now let's find out what some of those bad things is so you can keep in, the, keep in your mind that you do fit these prophecies and that you are from the Father of Issachar. Jump down to verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And my eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So the Bible said one of those bad things, this is this was written way two thousands and thousands of years ago. I didn't put this in here, we didn't put this in here, you didn't put this in here. God say if the tribe of Issachar, the so-called Mexicans, would not hearken unto the Bible, that one of the bad things uh, be put on them, that their kids will be taken and given to another people. Read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall no might it be in their hands. So when the Spaniards came and conquered Issachar in the land mass, was they taking sons and daughters, uh, uh, giving them to other uh, Spaniards to take them to different planta uh, different plantations or tobacco fields to work, uh, work the fields? That was happening. Now when you speed it up to today, where you can relate to, uh, when, when they was coming in across the border, it was something that was big on the news and it's still, they try to hide it and not talk about it, but they was taking a lot of the kids from the mothers and the fathers and they was putting them in board in a concentration little caps or whatever, trying to figure out when they gonna, uh, what was the what was gonna be the judgment or whatever, but half of these kids never got they, they, they said they don't even know where the kids at. Bring it out. They was, so once they crossed the border, the border patrol locked them up, put their mama and, and fathers in one detention center, and put the kids in another detention center. Did you, did you know that? You heard about that on the news, that they was taking them from their families and the kids was coming up missing? Read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, uh -huh. and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So, and there shall be no might in thy hand. So it say thy eyes shall fail with longing, for they, the parents will look at their kids being taken and will cry. It will want their ch children's back. But the Bible say it will be no might in the parents' hand to get their kids back. Once, once, once the customs ICE took them or and locked them up and separated them in different detentions, it, the parents had no might to say no. Nah, uh, open up the door, let all my kids out, and we finna walk over here. We finna go back to Mexico, or we finna go to Chicago. We finna go to Seattle, or go over wherever we want to go. No, they don't have that might. That's the Bible prophesied. That's how you will understand that you are a part of the twelve tribes. That your forefather, so-called Mexicans, is the tribe of Issachar. That's so right. You fit the prophecies that's written in the Bible before time. That's how you understand. Let's get some more curses. Jump down to uh, 46. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. Read. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So. God say the curses, the bad things that will be happening to the uh, to the uh, all twelve tribes and to the tribe of Issachar, it will be bad things, and they will be upon them for a sign. So, what does a sign do? When you look at a sign, what does a sign do? A sign, just like the Walgreens sign right there behind you. What does that Walgreens sign let you know? 
that it's a Walgreens. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible said. It said the curses will be upon the Israelites forever and right. upon their seeds, meaning their children, forever. Teach. Teach so that way you will be able to understand like, well, do I fit anything? It's a sign. You, you, you read through the Bible, you read through Deuteronomy 28, and you say, is this my people? Does this happen to my cousins, my uncles, my aunties, my nephews? Does this happen to me? That's a sign, and that's how you will be able to identify. Read it again. And they shall be upon thee for a sign, uh -huh. and for a wonder, uh -huh. and upon thy seed forever. And upon thy seed forever. Because when you see the curses, now you wonder, like, why is my people always getting shot down? Why is my, why is they taking the kids from the family and splitting us up? Why don't they want us in the United States of America? Why is they keep on trying to oppress us and build the wall? Right. What what did we do to them? That's the wondering. But then when you read the Bible, you understand that it's because we broke God's law. That's the Bible right. tell you this is all happening because we went against the one true God of, of the Bible who created us and everything on this earth. Read it again. And they shall be upon thee for a sign, uh -huh. and for a wonder, uh -huh. and upon thy seed forever. Forever. Read. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Because we're not serving God. we not really read this Bible and understanding who we are in this Bible and keeping the commandments of God. God That's right. right. To keep the Sabbath day holy. The Sabbath day is on the seventh day of the week, which will be today. But you know what we do? We go to church on Sunday. We're not serving God. You know what we do? We serve Catholicism. Roman, uh, 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 we, we, we become Roman Catholic, which I never understood how can, uh, uh, the Mexicans be Roman Catholic and Rome is a white people are the white people in Rome. So how can you become a that shows you that you follow behind your oppressor? Everything that you know about religion, about faith, and about the Bible, you learned it from the oppressor. Right. That's the only way. Read it again. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness uh -huh. and with gladness of heart uh -huh. for the abundance of all things. Read. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So the Bible say, therefore shall we, since we don't want to listen to what God said to do, and we don't want to keep the Sabbath day, which is written in the Bible, right. we, want, we don't want to keep the high holy days, which is written in the Bible, it say he going to do what? Therefore? Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So now since we don't want to serve God and do what God said to do, he said we're going to serve our enemies. Right. Is an enemy somebody that's good to you? No, an enemy is somebody that wants to see your despise, uh, despise and want to bring you down. Right. It, read it again. Therefore yeah. shall thou serve thy enemies, uh -huh. which the Lord shall send against thee. So God sent our enemies against us. Right. He said, go get them. Since they don't want to listen to me, I'm going to put the spirit on y'all to go take the Spaniards, to go take them into captivity. To put them in suppression, to build the wall up, to keep them over there, to separate the kids. Why? Because they're not listening to me. And that's why you, that's why the sounds is there for you to wonder and say, why is I'm going through that? So God can get your attention and bring you back to the Bible. So you can get back on oh, so you can get back into the line of serving God. That's what that's the whole reason of the curses being upon us. Read. And in thirst. It said, and in thirst. So that means, he said we was going to have to serve our enemies even in thirst. Let me ask y'all this. At any of these Walgreens, any of these restaurants, do any of these people, our people, the so-called Mexicans, any of these stores, do they own the bottled waters that come into the store? Well, let me ask this. Do they own the companies that make the waters or the goods that get delivered to the stores? Who owned it? Who owned Asani, Aquafina, Smart Water? And who owned the big change companies? The white people. Right. The Bible said you will have to serve your enemy in thirst. So that means whatever you want to drink, you're going to get it from your enemies, which will be the white man, the Spaniard, the one who put us in captivity. Why? Because we did not keep the commandments of God. Right. So that's the thing of the curses. Like I said, the curses is us for us to identify what we doing wrong and how not to do it so we can get out of the line of curses. Read it again. Therefore shall thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord thy God shall uh -huh. send against thee uh -huh. in hunger, 
And then thirst. And then thirst. Now let me tell you this. If you don't pay your water bill at your house, what's gonna happen? And who controls when it, uh, the, the, when it get cut off? The big companies, the white men are right. enemies. So it's summing up to let you know we go through this. We go through this as a as a, as the nation of Israel go through these curses. These curses fit us. That's how we know that we're not Roman Catholic. That's how we know we're not Christians. That's how we know we're not Muslims. That's how we know we are the children of Israel. That's, That's right. right. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.